Hi and welcome back. In part 1, we took you on a whirlwind tour of Brussels, exploring a few of its famous landmarks, like the Grand Place. But the adventure doesn't end there. Today, in part 2, we are diving deeper into the heart of Brussels to uncover its hidden gems. So, fasten your seatbelts and let's get started. We are walking along the The Brussels Canal, which is a significant waterway in the city. It plays a crucial role in the city's transportation, history, and urban development. Just to recap, the city of Brussels is the largest municipality and historical center of the Brussels capital region, as well as the capital of the Flemish region and Belgium. We were making our way towards the Church of St. Catherine, walking along the cobbled streets. These streets have a long history that dates back centuries. They were originally constructed as a practical solution to create durable and stable road surfaces in an era when paved roads were not common. The use of cobblestones allowed for better drainage and increased durability compared to other materials available at the time. We were in the neighborhood of St. Gilles, a vibrant and culturally diverse area, connecting various other streets and landmarks. Leon Lepage Street, named after a Belgian painter, exhibits a mix of architectural styles, showcasing a combination of Art Nouveau, Neoclassical, and Haussmannian influences, reflecting different periods of the city's architectural history. Antoine Danset is another prominent street, and is known for its lively and trendy atmosphere, and is one of Brussels' main fashion and design districts. The street is lined with fashion boutiques, designer shops, concept stores, and independent ateliers. Next up is St. Catherine Square, named after the St. Catherine of Alexandria Church, which dominates the area. The square itself is a bustling and vibrant place, known for its lively atmosphere and numerous attractions. One of the main highlights is the beautiful church that was built in the 19th century and is an excellent example of neo-Gothic architecture. Another notable feature of Place St. Catherine is its proximity to the Brussels fish market. The market is famous for its fresh seafood and is a great place to explore if you're a seafood enthusiast. But for now, let me tell you a bit more about the St. Catherine Church. The church is dedicated to St. Catherine of Alexandria, a Christian martyr and one of the 14 holy helpers. The construction began in 1854 and was completed in 1874. The church façade is characterized by its two striking towers that dominate the skyline of St. Catherine Square. As you step inside, you'll be greeted by a spacious and light-filled interior. The nave is impressive, with tall columns supporting a high vaulted ceiling. Leaving the church, we made our way towards the fish market and towards the Ansbach fountain. The fish market is adjacent to St. Catherine Church and has a long history as a hub for seafood in the city. Dating back to the Middle Ages when it served as an important trading center for fish and other aquatic products, it has evolved over time and continues to be a popular destination for anyone seeking fresh seafood. The fish market is typically busiest on specific market days, which vary depending on the season and demand. Thursdays and weekends are usually popular market days when you can expect a bustling atmosphere with a larger selection of vendors and seafood options. Just a few steps away from the fish market is the Ansbach Fountain. It is named after Jules Ansbach, a former mayor of Brussels who initiated the modernization and urban development of the city in the late 19th century. The fountain features a central monumental structure with multiple basins and water jets. The design incorporates elements of neoclassical and Art Nouveau styles, reflecting the prevailing architectural trends of the time. The main feature of the fountain is a bronze sculpture known as Brussels Hydraulics. The sculpture represents the personification of the Brussels river system. 
It depicts a woman seated on a throne, surrounded by various aquatic creatures, including fish and turtles. Water flows from the sculpture into the basins below, creating a dynamic and visually appealing display. The Beguinage is a tranquil and historic area in the city that was originally established as a religious community for Beguines, lay religious women, during the Middle Ages. At its center is the St. John the Baptist Church, dating back to the 13th century, although it has undergone several renovations and alterations over the years. The Beguinage itself is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is a charming place to explore. Inside the church, you can admire various elements of architectural and artistic interest. The nave features tall, slender columns and a vaulted ceiling, typical of Gothic design. The stained glass windows, dating from the 19th century, depict scenes from the life of St. John the Baptist, adding color and vibrancy to the interior. It is a wonderful place to visit if you're interested in history, architecture, or simply seeking a quiet and reflective space within the city. The area around the church consists of a series of small houses and gardens surrounding the church. Located less than five minutes away from the church is another major square. Place de Brucier is named after the famous Belgian playwright and mayor of Brussels, Charles de Brucier. The square is situated at the intersection of several important boulevards, including Boulevard Ansbach, Boulevard Adolphe Max, and Rue Neuve. The square itself features an open space surrounded by buildings that house shops, restaurants, cafes, casinos, and theatres. Place de Brucier is a bustling and vibrant area with a mix of commercial, cultural, and transportation activities. It serves as a major hub for public transportation, with several tram and bus lines converging at the square. The Brucier metro station is also located here, providing easy access to different parts of the city. The square is also surrounded by several cultural institutions, including theatres like Theatre National and cinema complexes like UGC de Brucier. These venues offer a range of entertainment options, from movies to live performances, enhancing the vibrant atmosphere of the area. Located next to Place de Brucier, Rue Neuve, is one of the busiest shopping streets in the city. Stretching approximately 1.2 kilometers in length, the street is lined with an array of international and local retailers and is home to several major department stores, including Galleries Royals St. Hubert and City 2, which is one of the largest shopping centers in Brussels. The Passage du Nord is a historic covered shopping arcade. It was built in the late 19th century and reflects the architectural style popular during that period. It features an elegant glass and iron roof that allows natural light to illuminate the passage, creating a charming and inviting atmosphere. The National Theatre of Wallonia is a prominent theatre located in Brussels, Belgium. The Royal Opera House is a few minutes walk from Place de Brucier. Along the way, you'll pass through bustling streets and can enjoy the vibrant atmosphere of central Brussels. The Opera House is one of the most renowned cultural institutions in the country and holds a prominent place in the international opera scene. Its history dates back to the 17th century when it was originally established as a mint for coin production. However, it was converted into a theatre in the 18th century and has since become an iconic venue for opera, ballet, and contemporary music performances. We have reached the end of part 2 of our tour of Brussels. Remember to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell, so that you do not miss out part 3, which will be released next Friday. Meanwhile we hope you enjoyed yourselves in our company. Thank you, goodbye and see you again next Friday.